the jet suit guys from Gravity asked me if I could build a shoulder mounted head tracking gun turret so they could have some fun flying around shooting. Each of the turrets has bearings fitted in each end and that's for the vertical and the horizontal axis. I've got pieces that fit onto 2020 extrusion that go on the inside of the bearings and that means I can make a square axle that assembles so those parts rotate freely. That's the same for the vertical axis as well. And of course the horizontal axis fits onto the vertical axis and that makes our two axis gimbal. We do need to motorise those so I've got one motor for each axis and I'm using T5 pulleys and T5 belts to power the axis to basically mean that we can move both of them under control. And the gearboxes are worm driven so they don't really back drive. So now those motors and drive belts are fitted to each axis, we just need to put some feed back on and then we can turn each axis into a servo. So each of our rotary axis has a magnet fitted which of course stays still and the rest of the turret rotates around it. There's a small plate that fits over that and the encoder itself which is an AMS 5048B and we can take PWM out of that to a microcontroller. So that fits just on top. And of course this whole thing will rotate and the magnet will stay still and we're going to do that on both axes and that'll tell us the absolute position of each axis. I fitted some electronics in there and we've got two motor drivers to drive each axis, a Teensy 3.2 and also an Adafruit BMO055 inertial measurement unit breakout board. I've got my encoders wired in and that allows me to make each axis into a servo so I can send commands and then we can control those motors and send them to fixed positions. The next step from that of course is to control the motors from the inertial measurement unit for the two axes. So one inertial measurement unit will go onto the head of the jet suit pilot and as they look around that will control the axis of the gun gimbal. What I'm actually doing though is looking at the difference between the inertial measurement unit on the cable and the one in the base. So as the suit tips or the pilot flies around in circles, the gimbal doesn't think that they're actually turning their head. So it's only using the difference and that should give us an error between the two, which is the actual position of the pilot's head. There are a couple of issues with this though because the yaw axis for rotation is using the magnetometer and that seems to be affected by the magnets in the motors. Next it was time to go and visit the guys at Gravity and see what they wanted to mount on it and that turned out to be a fairly hefty airsoft gun. There was quite a lot of discussion about how this should be mounted, whether it should sit above or below the up and down axis, but ultimately we decided that basically if we put it on the shoulder and we still have the yaw axis that rotates it on the vertical axis, then the gun's probably going to hit you in the head, so we should probably lose that axis and they'll just rotate in their jet suit to fly and shoot side to side. So I removed that yaw axis just leaving the ability for the gun to move in the pitch axis and I made a gun mount but what I actually found was that the motor and drive combination wasn't really strong enough to move the gun reliably so it's a bit glitchy and quite wobbly and mostly the assembly just isn't strong enough for the mass. So that means it's time for a version 2 made of stainless steel tube and a really hefty linear actuator to give us a really good leverage angle on the gun. So that seems to work pretty well, I'm using a linear actuator left over from the Robot X project which I had specially made to travel at 100mm a second, so it'll actually go much faster than shown here. And I'm still reading the difference between the two inertial measurement units, so if the whole suit tips backwards and forwards nothing happens until the pilot moves his head. I've also implemented a cam to pull the trigger which is connected to a micro switch and a servo turns and that pulls the trigger. The gun has various modes so we can do single shot or auto fire. There's also a mode that disables the trigger and flips the gun up with another switch and that puts it into safe mode. So that looks a lot better, a lot more solid and a lot more robust so it's time to go back to gravity and give it a proper test on a jet suit.
So we were finally off to the secret testing location where Gravity test all of their prototype jet suits. Unfortunately the weather was pretty bad but there was eventually a break in the rain and Richard Browning got to give it a go. Yeah, we'll over there. Oh. <laughs> oh. That seems to work okay, obviously the installation's a bit hacky and there's some improvements to be made, but there'll probably be some more of this featured on the Gravity social media. So check out hashtag TakeOnGravity and various other links that I've put in the descriptions of this video. Alright, that's all for now.